Canaan, Northwest Semitic, Kanan, Phoenician, Kenan, Hebrew, Kenan Kenan, was a Semitic speaking region in the ancient Near East during the late 2nd millennium BC. The name Canaan appears throughout the Bible, where it corresponds to the Levant, in particular to the areas of the southern Levant that provide the main setting of the narrative of the Bible, i.e., the area of Phoenicia, Philistia, Israel, and other nations. The word Canaanites serves as an ethnic catch-all term covering various indigenous populations—both settled and nomadic pastoral groups—throughout the regions of the southern Levant or Canaan. It is by far the most frequently used ethnic term in the Bible. In the Book of Joshua, Canaanites are included in a list of nations to exterminate, and later described as a group which the Israelites had annihilated, although this narrative is not accepted by contemporary scholarship. The name, Canaanites. Kenanium Kenanum, Kenani Kenani is attested, many centuries later, as the endonym of the people later known to the ancient Greeks from c. 500 BC as Phoenicians, and following the emigration of Canaanite speakers to Carthage founded in the 9th century BC, was also used as a self-designation by the Punics Chinani of North Africa during late antiquity. Canaan had significant geopolitical importance in the late Bronze Age Amarna period 14th century BC as the area where the spheres of interest of the Egyptian, Hittite, Mitanni and Assyrian empires converged. Much of modern knowledge about Canaan stems from archaeological excavation in this area at sites such as Tel Hazor, Tel Megiddo, and Gezer. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The English term Canaan, pronounced since c. 1500, due to the Great Vowel Shift, comes from the Hebrew kin (kn) via Greek Canaan (kanon) and Latin Canaan. It appears as Kirki na na in the Amarna letters, 14th century BC, and Knn is found on coins from Phoenicia in the last half of the first millennium. It first occurs in Greek in the writings of Hecateus as Khna. Scholars connect the name Canaan with Knn, Canaan, the general Northwest Semitic name for this region. The etymology is uncertain. An early explanation derives the term from the Semitic root kn, to be low, humble, subjugated. Some scholars have suggested that this implies an original meaning of lowlands, in contrast with Aram, which would then mean highlands, whereas others have suggested it meant the subjugated as the name of Egypt's province in the Levant, and evolved into the proper name in a similar fashion to Provincia Nostra the first Roman colony north of the Alps, which became Provence, an alternative suggestion put forward by Ephraim of Vigdor Spicer in 1936 derives the term from Hurrian Kinahu, purportedly referring to the color purple, so that Canaan and Phoenicia would be synonyms, land of purple. Tablets found in the Hurrian city of Nuzi in the early 20th century appear to use the term Kinanu as a synonym for red or purple dye, laboriously produced by the Kassite rulers of Babylon from Murex shells as early as 1600 BC, and on the Mediterranean coast by the Phoenicians from a byproduct of glassmaking. Purple cloth became a renowned Canaanite export commodity which is mentioned in Exodus. The dyes may have been named after their place of origin. The name Phoenicia is connected with the Greek word for purple", apparently referring to the same product, but it is difficult to state with certainty whether the Greek word came from the name, or vice versa. The purple cloth of Tyre in Phoenicia was well known far and wide and was associated by the Romans with nobility and royalty. However, according to Robert Drews, Spicer's proposal has generally been abandoned. <laughs> Archaeology Topic. Origins Canaanite culture apparently developed in situ from the earlier Gasolian Chalcolithic culture, which pioneered the Mediterranean agricultural system typical of the Canaanite region, which comprised intensive subsistence horticulture, extensive grain growing, commercial wine and olive cultivation and transhumance pastoralism. Gasolian itself developed from the circum-Arabian nomadic pastoral complex, which in turn developed from a fusion of their ancestral Natufian and Harafian cultures with pre-pottery Neolithic B PPNB farming cultures, practicing animal domestication. During the 6200 BC climatic crisis which led to the agricultural revolution, Neolithic revolution in the Levant. The late Bronze Age state of Ugarit at Ras Shamra in Syria is considered quintessentially Canaanite archaeologically, even though its Ugaritic language does not belong to the Canaanite language group proper. 
Topic: <laughs> Middle Bronze Age. Topic: <laughs> Ebla tablets C 2500 BC. A disputed reference to Lord of Ghana Na in the Semitic Ebla tablets dated 2350 BC from the archive of Tel Mardik has been interpreted by some scholars to mention the deity Dagon by the title, Lord of Canaan. If correct, this would suggest that Eblet were conscious of Canaan as an entity by 2500 BC. Jonathan Tubb states that the term Ghana Na may provide a third millennium reference to Canaanite, while at the same time stating that the first certain reference is in the 18th century BC. See Ebla Biblical Controversy for further details. Topic. Mari Letters c. 2000 BC. A letter from Mut Bisser to Shamshi Adad I c. 1809-1776 BC of the Old Assyrian Empire 2025-1750 BC has been translated. It is in Rahisam that the brigands Habatum and the Canaanites Kinanum are situated. It was found in 1973 in the ruins of Mari, an Assyrian outpost at that time in Syria. Additional unpublished references to Kinanum in the Mari letters refer to the same episode. Whether the term Kinanum refers to people from a specific region or rather people of foreign origin has been disputed, such that Robert Drews states that the first certain cuneiform reference to Canaan is found on the Alalic statue of King Idrimi below. Topic. Late Bronze Age cuneiform 1500 to 1000 BC. Alalic texts a reference to Amia being in the land of Canaan is found on the statue of Idrimi 16th century BC from Alalic in modern Syria. After a popular uprising against his rule, Idrimi was forced into exile with his mother's relatives to seek refuge in the land of Canaan where he prepared for an eventual attack to recover his city. The other references in the Alalic texts are At 154, unpublished At 181, a list of Apiru people with their origins. All are towns, except for Canaan At 188, a list of Muskenu people with their origins. All are towns, except for three lands including Canaan At 48, a contract with a Canaanite hunter Amarna letters References to Canaanites are also found throughout the Amarna letters of Pharaoh Akhenaten c. 1350 BC. In these letters, some of which were sent by governors and princes of Canaan to their Egyptian overlord Akhenaten Amenhotep IV in the 14th century BC, are found, beside Amar and Amoru Amorides, the two forms Kinahai and Kinahi, corresponding to Kena and Kenaan respectively, and including Syria in its widest extent, as Eduard Meyer has shown. The letters are written in the official and diplomatic East Semitic Akkadian language of Assyria and Babylonia, though Canaanitish words and idioms are also in evidence. The known references are EA8, letter from Berna Bariish II to Akhenaten, explaining that his merchants were detained in Canaan for business matters, robbed and killed in Hinatuna of the land of Canaan by the rulers of Acre and Shamhuna, and asks for compensation because Canaan is your country. EA 9, letter from Berna Bariish II to Tutankhamun. All the Canaanites wrote to Kuragalzu saying, Come to the border of the country so we can revolt and be allied with you. EA 30, letter from Tushrata. To the kings of Canaan. Provide my messenger with safe entry into Egypt. EA 109, letter of Rib Hadda. Previously, on seeing a man from Egypt, the kings of Canaan fled before him, but now the sons of Abdi Asherda make men from Egypt prowl about like dogs. EA 110, Letter of Rib Hadda. No ship of the army is to leave Canaan. EA 131, Letter of Rib Hadda. If he does not send archers, they will take Byblos and all the other cities, and the lands of Canaan will not belong to the king. May the king ask Yanhamu about these matters. EA 137, Letter of Rib Hadda. If the king neglects Byblos, of all the cities of Canaan not one will be his. EA 367, Hani son of Maria, chief of the stable, of the king in Canaan. EA 162, Letter to Aziru. 
You yourself know that the king does not want to go against all of Canaan when he rages. EA 148, letter from Abimilku to the Pharaoh. The king has taken over the land of the king for the Apiru. May the king ask his commissioner, who is familiar with Canaan. EA 151, letter from Abimilku to the Pharaoh. The king, my lord wrote to me, write to me what you have heard from Canaan. Abimilku describes in response what has happened in eastern Cilicia Danuna, the northern coast of Syria Ugarit, in Syria Kadesh, Amoru, and Damascus as well as in Sidon, Ugarit texts Text 20 rupees. 182 from Ugarit is a copy of a letter of the king of Ugarit to Ramesses II concerning money paid by the sons of the land of Ugarit to the foreman of the sons of the land of Canaan asterisk Nani. According to Jonathan Tubb, this suggests that the Semitic people of Ugarit, contrary to much modern opinion, considered themselves to be non Canaanite. The other Ugarit reference, KTU 4.96, shows a list of traders assigned to royal estates, of which one of the estates had three Ugaritans, an Ashdadite, an Egyptian, and a Canaanite, Asher tablets. A Middle Assyrian letter during the reign of Shalmaneser I includes a reference to the travel to Canaan of an Assyrian official, Hattusa letters. Four references are known from Hattusa. An evocation to the cedar gods, includes reference to Canaan alongside Sidon, Tyre and possibly Amoru. KBO 28-1, Ramesses the second letter to Hattusili III, in which Ramesses suggested he would meet his brother in Canaan and bring him to Egypt. Cub 357 also Cub 337 plus KBO I-17, broken text which may refer to Canaan as an Egyptian subdistrict. KBOI 15 plus 19, Ramesses the second letter to Hattusili III, describing Ramesses' visit to the land of Canaan on his way to Kinza and Harita. Topic: Late Bronze Age hieroglyphic and hieratic, 1500 to 1000 BC. During the second millennium BC, ancient Egyptian texts use the term Canaan to refer to an Egyptian-ruled colony, whose boundaries generally corroborate the definition of Canaan found in the Hebrew Bible, bounded to the west by the Mediterranean Sea, to the north in the vicinity of Hamath in Syria, to the east by the Jordan Valley, and to the south by a line extended from the Dead Sea to around Gaza. Nevertheless, the Egyptian and Hebrew uses of the term are not identical. The Egyptian texts also identify the coastal city of Kadesh in northwest Syria near Turkey as part of the land of Canaan, so that the Egyptian usage seems to refer to the entire Levantine coast of the Mediterranean Sea, making it a synonym of another Egyptian term for this coastland, Retgenu. Lebanon, in northern Canaan, bordered by the Latani River to the watershed of the Orontes River, was known by the Egyptians as Upper Retgenu. In Egyptian campaign accounts, the term Jahi was used to refer to the watershed of the Jordan River. Many earlier Egyptian sources also mention numerous military campaigns conducted in Ka Na Na, just inside Asia. Archaeological attestation of the name Canaan in ancient Near Eastern sources relates almost exclusively to the period in which the region operated as a colony of the New Kingdom of Egypt 16th centuries BC, with usage of the name almost disappearing following the Late Bronze Age collapse c. 1206 BC. The references suggest that during this period the term was familiar to the region's neighbors on all sides, although scholars have disputed to what extent such references provide a coherent description of its location and boundaries, and regarding whether the inhabitants used the term to describe themselves. 16 references are known in Egyptian sources, from the 18th dynasty of Egypt onwards. Amenhotep II inscriptions, Canaanites are included in a list of prisoners of war. Three topographical lists. Papyrus Anastasi I-27, 1. Refers to the route from Sile to Gaza. The foreign countries of the end of the land of Canaan. Mernepta Steel Papyrus Anastasi IIIA 5-6 and Papyrus Anastasi IV-16, 4 refer to Canaanite slaves from Heru. Papyrus Harris after the collapse of the Levant under the so-called Peoples of the Sea. Ramesses III c. 1194 BC is said to have built a temple to the god Amen to receive tribute from the southern Levant. 
This was described as being built in Pa Canaan, a geographical reference whose meaning is disputed, with suggestions that it may refer to the city of Gaza or to the entire Egyptian occupied territory in the southwest corner of the Near East. Later sources Padisit's statue is the last known Egyptian reference to Canaan, a small statuette labeled, Envoy of the Canaan and of Pelset, Pa Deset, the son of Apy. The inscription is dated to 900 to 850 BC, more than 300 years after the preceding known inscription, during the period from c. 900 to 330 BC, the dominant empires of the Neo-Assyrians and Achaemenid Persians make no mention of Canaan. Topic: <laughs> Greco-Roman historiography. The Greek term Phoenicia is first attested in the first two works of Western literature, Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. It does not occur in the Hebrew Bible, but occurs three times in the New Testament in the Book of Acts. In the 6th century BC, Hecateus of Miletus affirms that Phoenicia was formerly called Shna, a name that Philo of Byblos subsequently adopted into his mythology as his eponym for the Phoenicians, Khna who was afterwards called Phoenix. Quoting fragments attributed to Sanchuniathon, he relates that Byblos, Baratus and Tyre were among the first cities ever built, under the rule of the mythical Cronus, and credits the inhabitants with developing fishing, hunting, agriculture, shipbuilding and writing. Coins of the city of Beirut, Laodicea bear the legend, of Laodicea, a metropolis in Canaan. These coins are dated to the reign of Antiochus IV 175 BC and his successors until 123 BC St. Augustine also mentions that one of the terms the seafaring Phoenicians called their homeland was, Canaan. Augustine also records that the rustic people of Hippo in North Africa retained the Punic self-designation Chinani. Since Punic in Latin also meant non-Roman, some scholars however argue that the language referred to as Punic in Augustine may have been Libyan. The Greeks also popularized the term Palestine, named after the Greek Philistines or the Aegean Pelasgians, for roughly the region of Canaan, excluding Phoenicia, with Herodotus first recorded use of Palestine, c. 480 BC. From 110 BC, the Hasmoneans extended their authority over much of the region, creating a Judean Samaritan Adumian Etorian Galilean alliance. The Judean Jewish control over the wider area resulted in it also becoming known as Judea, a term that had previously only referred to the smaller region of the Judean Mountains, the allotment of the tribe of Judah, and heartland of the former kingdom of Judah. Between 73–63 BC, the Roman Republic extended its influence into the region in the Third Mithridatic War, conquering Judea in 63 BC, and splitting the former Hasmonean kingdom into five districts. Around 130–135 AD, as a result of the suppression of the Bar Kokhba revolt, the province of Iudea was joined with Galilee to form new province of Syria-Palestina. There is circumstantial evidence linking Hadrian with the name change, although the precise date is not certain, and the interpretation of some scholars that the name change may have been intended to complete the dissociation with Judea is disputed. Topic: History. Topic: Overview. Prior to 3500 BC prehistory, Stone Age and Chalcolithic, hunter-gatherer societies slowly giving way to farming and herding societies, and early metal working in the last thousand years 3500-2000 BC early bronze, prior to written records in the area 2000-1550 BC middle bronze, city-states 1550-1200 BC late bronze, Egyptian hegemony 1200 to 586 BC Iron Age divided into Iron Age I and II village societies in Iron I giving way to kingdoms in Iron II After the Iron Age the periods are named after the various empires that ruled the region Assyrian Babylonian Persian Greek Hellenistic and Roman Topic Prehistory One of the earliest settlements in the region was at Jericho in Canaan the earliest settlements were seasonal, but, by the Bronze Age, had developed into large urban centers. Early Bronze Age -2000. 
By the early Bronze Age other sites had developed, such as Ebla where an East Semitic language, Eblate, was spoken, which by c. 2300 BC was incorporated into the Mesopotamia-based Akkadian Empire of Sargon the Great and Naram Sin of Akkad, Biblical Akkad. Sumerian references to the Mar, too. Tent dwellers, later Amoru, i.e. Amorite country west of the Euphrates date from even earlier than Sargon, at least to the reign of the Sumerian king, in Shakashana of Uruk, and one tablet credits the early Sumerian king Lugal An Mundu with holding sway in the region, although this tablet is considered less credible because it was produced centuries later. The archives of Ebla show reference to a number of biblical sites, including Hazor, Jerusalem, and as a number of people have claimed, to Sodom and Gomorrah mentioned in Genesis as well. Ebla and Amorites at Hazor, Kadesh, Kadesh on the Orontes, and elsewhere in Amoru Syria bordered Canaan in the north and northeast. Ugarit may be included among these Amoritic entities. The collapse of the Akkadian Empire in 2154 BC saw the arrival of peoples using Kerbet Kurik ware pottery, coming originally from the Zagros Mountains in modern Iran east of the Tigris. The first cities in the southern Levant arose during this period. These proto Canaanites were in regular contact with the other peoples to their south such as Egypt, and to the North Asia Minor Hurrians, Hashans, Hittites, Luwians, and Mesopotamia Sumer, Akkad, Assyria, a trend that continued through the Iron Age. The end of the period is marked by the abandonment of the cities and a return to lifestyles based on farming villages and semi-nomadic herding, although specialized craft production continued and trade routes remained open. Middle Bronze Age 2000 to 1550. Urbanism returned and the region was divided among small city-states, the most important of which seems to have been Hazor. Many aspects of Canaanite material culture now reflected a Mesopotamian influence, and the entire region became more tightly integrated into a vast international trading network, as early as Naram Sin of Akkad's reign c. 2240 BC, Amoru was called one of the four quarters surrounding Sumer, along with Subartu, Assyria, Akkad, and Elam. Amorite dynasties also came to dominate in much of Mesopotamia, including in Larsa, Isin and founding the state of Babylon in 1894 BC. Later on, Amoru became the Assyrian, Akkadian term for the interior of south as well as for northerly Canaan. At this time the Canaanite area seemed divided between two confederacies, one centered upon Megiddo in the Jezreel Valley, the second on the more northerly city of Kadesh on the Orontes River. An Amorite chieftain named Sumu Abum founded Babylon as an independent city-state in 1894 BC. One Amorite king of Babylonia, Hammurabi BC founded the first Babylonian Empire, which lasted only as long as his lifetime. Upon his death, the Amorites were driven from Assyria, but remained masters of Babylonia until 1595 BC, when they were ejected by the Hittites. The semi-fictional story of Sanu describes an Egyptian officer, Sanu, conducting military activities in the area of Upper Rechenu and Fink during the reign of Senaret I c. 1950 BC. The earliest bona fide Egyptian report of a campaign to Mentu Rechenu and Sekmum Shechem is the Sebek Khu steel, dated to the reign of Senaret III c. 1862 BC. Around 1650 BC, Canaanites invaded the eastern delta of Egypt, where, known as the Hyksos, they became the dominant power. In Egyptian inscriptions, Amar and Amoru Amorites are applied strictly to the more northerly mountain region east of Phoenicia, extending to the Orontes. Archaeological excavations of a number of sites, later identified as Canaanite, show that prosperity of the region reached its apogee during this Middle Bronze Age period, under leadership of the city of Hazor, at least nominally tributary to Egypt for much of the period. In the north, the cities of Yamkad and Katna were hegemons of important confederacies, and it would appear that biblical Hazor was the chief city of another important coalition in the south. Late Bronze Age 1550 In the early Late Bronze Age, Canaanite confederacies centered on Megiddo and Kadesh, before again being brought into the Egyptian Empire and Hittite Empire. Later still, the Neo-Assyrian Empire assimilated the region. 
The migrant ancient Semitic speaking peoples who appear to have settled in the region included among others the Amorites who had earlier controlled Babylonia. The Hebrew Bible mentions the Amorites in the table of peoples Gen 10:16-18a. Evidently, the Amorites played a significant role in the early history of Canaan. In Gen 14-7f, Josh 10-5f, Doi 119f, 27:44, we find them located in the southern mountain country, while verses such as Num 21:13, Josh 9:10, 24-8:12, etc. tell of two great Amorite kings residing at Heshbon and Ashtaroth, east of the Jordan. However, other passages such as Gen, 1516, 48 to 22, Josh, 2415, Judge, 134, etc., regard the name Amorite as synonymous with Canaanite. However, Amorite is never used for the population on the coast. In the centuries preceding the appearance of the biblical Hebrews, parts of Canaan and southwestern Syria became tributary to the Egyptian pharaohs, although domination by the Egyptians remained sporadic, and not strong enough to prevent frequent local rebellions and intercity struggles. Other areas such as northern Canaan and northern Syria came to be ruled by the Assyrians during this period. Under Thutmose III (1479–1426 BC) and Amenhotep II (1427–1400 BC), the regular presence of the strong hand of the Egyptian ruler and his armies kept the Amorites and Canaanites sufficiently loyal. Nevertheless, Thutmose III reported a new and troubling element in the population. Habaru or in Egyptian Apiru are reported for the first time. These seem to have been mercenaries, brigands or outlaws, who may have at one time led a settled life, but with bad luck or due to the force of circumstances, contributed a rootless element to the population, prepared to hire themselves to whichever local mayor, king or princeling would pay for their support. Although Habaru saw Gaz a Sumerian ideogram glossed as brigand. In Akkadian, and sometimes Habiri an Akkadian word had been reported in Mesopotamia from the reign of the Sumerian king, Shulga of Ur III, their appearance in Canaan appears to have been due to the arrival of a new state based in Asia Minor to the north of Assyria and based upon a Marianu aristocracy of horse-drawn charioteers, associated with the Indo-Aryan rulers of the Hurrians, known as Mitanni. The Habaru seem to have been more a social class than an ethnic group. One analysis shows that the majority were, however, Hurrian a non-Semitic speaking group from Asia Minor who spoke a language isolate, though there were a number of Semites and even some Kassite and Luwian adventurers amongst their number. The reign of Amenhotep III, as a result was not quite so tranquil for the Asiatic province, as Habaru, Apiru contributed to greater political instability. It is believed that turbulent chiefs began to seek their opportunities, though as a rule they could not find them without the help of a neighboring king. The boldest of the disaffected nobles was Aziru, son of Abdi Ashurda, a prince of Amoru, who, even before the death of Amenhotep III, endeavoured to extend his power into the plain of Damascus. Akizi, governor of Katna, Katna near Hamath, reported this to the pharaoh, who seems to have sought to frustrate Aziru's attempts. In the next reign of the next pharaoh, Akhenaten, reigned c. 1352 to c. 1335 BC, however, both father and son caused infinite trouble to loyal servants of Egypt like Rib Hadda, governor of Gubla Gabal, not the least through transferring loyalty from the Egyptian crown to that of the expanding neighboring Asia Minor-based Hittite Empire under Supiluliuma I reigned c. 1344-1322 BC. Egyptian power in Canaan thus suffered a major setback when the Hittites or Hat -t advanced into Syria in the reign of Amenhotep III, and when they became even more threatening in that of his successor, displacing the Amorites and prompting a resumption of Semitic migration. Abdi Ashurda and his son Aziru, at first afraid of the Hittites, afterwards made a treaty with their king, and joining with the Hittites, attacked and conquered the districts remaining loyal to Egypt. In vain did Rib Hadda send touching appeals for aid to the distant pharaoh, who was far too engaged in his religious innovations to attend to such messages. The Amarna letters tell of the Habiri in northern Syria. Etakama wrote thus to the pharaoh, Behold, Namuaza has surrendered all the cities of the king, my lord to the Sagaz in the land of Kadesh and in Ubi. But I will go, and if thy gods and thy son go before me, I will bring back the cities to the king, my lord, from the Habiri, to show myself subject to him, and I will expel the Sa Gaz. Similarly, Zimrida, king of Sidon, named Siduna, declared, All my cities which the king has given into my hand, have come into the hand of the Habiri. 
The king of Jerusalem, Abdi Heba, reported to the pharaoh. If Egyptian troops come this year, lands and princes will remain to the king, my lord, but if troops come not, these lands and princes will not remain to the king, my lord." Abdi Heba's principal trouble arose from persons called Eilkili and the sons of Labayah, who are said to have entered into a treasonable league with the Habiri. Apparently this restless warrior found his death at the siege of Jena. All these princes, however, maligned each other in their letters to the pharaoh, and protested their own innocence of traitorous intentions. Namuaza, for instance, whom Etakama see above, accused of disloyalty, wrote thus to the pharaoh. Behold, I and my warriors and my chariots, together with my brethren and my sagas, and my sudi, nine are at the disposal of the royal troops to go whithersoever the king, my lord, commands. From the mid-14th century BC through to the 11th century BC, much of Canaan particularly the north, central and eastern regions of Syria and the northwestern Mediterranean coastal regions fell to the Middle Assyrian Empire, and both Egyptian and Hittite influence waned as a result. Powerful Assyrian kings extracted tribute from Canaanite states and cities from north, east and central Syria as far as the Mediterranean. The king of Assyria Erech den Ili reigned c. 1307-1296 BC, consolidated Assyrian power in the Levant, he defeated and conquered ancient Semitic-speaking peoples of the so-called Alamu group. He was followed by Adad Nirari I who continued expansion to the northwest, mainly at the expense of the Hittites and Hurrians, conquering Hittite territories such as Carchemish and beyond. In 1274 BC Shalmaneser I ascended the Assyrian throne. A powerful warrior king, he annexed territories in Syria and Canaan previously under Egyptian or Hittite influence, and the growing power of Assyria was perhaps the reason why these two states made peace with one another. This trend continued under Tukulti Ninurta I and after a hiatus, under Tiglath Pileser I who conquered the Arameans of northern Syria, and thence he proceeded to conquer Damascus and the Canaanite, Phoenician cities of Byblos, Sidon, Tyre and finally Arvad. <laughs> Bronze Age collapse Ann Killebrew has shown that cities such as Jerusalem were large and important walled settlements in the pre-Israelite Middle Bronze IIB and the Israelite Iron Age IIC period c. 1800-1550 and 720-586 BC, but that during the intervening Late Bronze LB and Iron Age I and IIA, B ages sites like Jerusalem were small and relatively insignificant and unfortified towns. Just after the Amarna period a new problem arose which was to trouble the Egyptian control of southern Canaan the rest of the region now being under Assyrian control. Pharaoh Hormhab campaigned against Shasu Egyptian equals wanderers, or living in nomadic pastoralist tribes, who had moved across the Jordan to threaten Egyptian trade through Galilee and Jezreel. Seti I c. 1290 BC is said to have conquered these Shasu, Semitic-speaking nomads living just south and east of the Dead Sea, from the fortress of Taru to Ka -en -na. After the near collapse of the Battle of Kadesh, Ramesses II had to campaign vigorously in Canaan to maintain Egyptian power. Egyptian forces penetrated into Moab and Ammon, where a permanent fortress garrison called simply Ramesses was established. Some believe the Habaru signified generally all the nomadic tribes known as Hebrews, and particularly the early Israelites of the period of the Judges who sought to appropriate the fertile region for themselves. However, the term was rarely used to describe the Shasu. Whether the term may also include other related ancient Semitic-speaking peoples such as the Moabites, Ammonites and Edomites is uncertain. It may not be an ethnonym at all, see the article Habaru for details. <laughs> Iron Age By the early Iron Age, the southern Levant came to be dominated by the kingdoms of Israel and Judah, besides the Philistine city-states on the Mediterranean coast, and the kingdoms of Moab, Ammon and Aram Damascus east of the Jordan River, and Edom to the south. The northern Levant was divided into various petty kingdoms, the so-called Syro-Hittite states and the Phoenician city-states. 
The entire region including all Phoenician, Canaanite and Aramean states, together with Israel, Philistia and Samara was conquered by the Neo-Assyrian Empire during the 10th and 9th centuries BC, and would remain so for 300 years until the end of the 7th century BC. Assyrian emperor kings such as Ashurnasirpal, Adad-Nirari II, Sargon II, Tiglath-Pileser III, Esarhaddon, Sennacherib and Ashurbanipal came to dominate Canaanite affairs. The Egyptians, then under a Nubian dynasty, made a failed attempt to regain a foothold in the region, but were vanquished by the Assyrians, leading to an Assyrian invasion and conquest of Egypt and the destruction of the Kushite Empire. The Kingdom of Judah was forced to pay tribute to Assyria. Between 616 and 605 BC the Assyrian Empire collapsed due to a series of bitter internal civil wars, followed by an attack by an alliance of Babylonians, Medes and Persians and the Scythians. The Babylonians inherited the western part of the empire of their Assyrian brethren, including all the lands in Canaan and Syria, together with Israel and Judah. They successfully defeated the Egyptians, who had belatedly attempted to aid their former masters, the Assyrians, and then remained in the region in an attempt to regain a foothold in the Near East. The Babylonian Empire itself collapsed in 539 BC, and Canaan fell to the Persians and became a part of the Achaemenid Empire. It remained so until in 332 BC it was conquered by the Greeks under Alexander the Great, later to fall to Rome in the late 2nd century BC, and then Byzantium, until the Arab Islamic invasion and conquest of the 7th century. Culture Canaan included what today are Lebanon, Israel, northwestern Jordan, and some western areas of Syria. According to archaeologist Jonathan N. Tubb, "...Ammonites, Moabites, Israelites and Phoenicians undoubtedly achieved their own cultural identities, and yet ethnically they were all Canaanites. The same people who settled in farming villages in the region in the 8th millennium BC." There is uncertainty about whether the name Canaan refers to a specific Semitic-speaking ethnic group wherever they live, the homeland of this ethnic group, or a region under the control of this ethnic group, or perhaps any combination of the three. Canaanite civilization was a response to long periods of stable climate interrupted by short periods of climate change. During these periods, Canaanites profited from their intermediary position between the ancient civilizations of the Middle East, Ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, Sumer, Akkad, Assyria, Babylonia, the Hittites, and Minoan Crete to become city states of merchant princes along the coast, with small kingdoms specializing in agricultural products in the interior. This polarity, between coastal towns and agrarian hinterland, was illustrated in Canaanite mythology by the struggle between the storm god, variously called Teshub or Baal Hadad Semitic Amorite, Aramean, and Yah, Yah, Yahu or Yam, god of the sea and rivers. Early Canaanite civilization was characterized by small walled market towns, surrounded by peasant farmers growing a range of local horticultural products, along with commercial growing of olives, grapes for wine, and pistachios, surrounded by extensive grain cropping, predominantly wheat and barley. Harvest in early summer was a season when transhumance nomadism was practiced—shepherds staying with their flocks during the wet season and returning to graze them on the harvested stubble, closer to water supplies in the summer. Evidence of this cycle of agriculture is found in the Gezer calendar and in the biblical cycle of the year. Periods of rapid climate change generally saw a collapse of this mixed Mediterranean farming system, commercial production was replaced with subsistence agricultural foodstuffs, and transhumans pastoralism became a year-round nomadic pastoral activity, whilst tribal groups wandered in a circular pattern north to the Euphrates, or south to the Egyptian delta with their flocks. Occasionally, tribal chieftains would emerge, raiding enemy settlements and rewarding loyal followers from the spoils or by tariffs levied on merchants. Should the cities band together and retaliate, a neighboring state intervene or should the chieftain suffer a reversal of fortune, allies would fall away or inter-tribal feuding would return. It has been suggested that the patriarchal tales of the Bible reflect such social forms. During the periods of the collapse of Akkadian Empire in Mesopotamia and the first intermediate period of Egypt, the Hyksos invasions and the end of the Middle Bronze Age in Assyria and Babylonia, and the Late Bronze Age collapse, trade through the Canaanite area would dwindle, as Egypt, Babylonia, and to a lesser degree Assyria, withdrew into their isolation. When the climate stabilized, trade would resume firstly along the coast in the area of the Philistine and Phoenician cities. 
As markets redeveloped, new trade routes that would avoid the heavy tariffs of the coast would develop from Kadesh Barnea, through Hebron, Lachish, Jerusalem, Bethel, Samaria, Shechem, Shiloh through Galilee to Jezreel, Hazor and Megiddo. Secondary Canaanite cities would develop in this region. Further economic development would see the creation of a third trade route from Eilath, Timnah, Edom, Seir, Moab, Ammon and thence to the Aramean states of Damascus and Palmyra. Earlier states for example the Philistines and Tyrians in the case of Judah and Samaria, for the second route, and Judah and Israel for the third route tried generally unsuccessfully to control the interior trade. Eventually, the prosperity of this trade would attract more powerful regional neighbors, such as ancient Egypt, Assyria, the Babylonians, Persians, ancient Greeks and Romans, who would control the Canaanites politically, levying tribute, taxes and tariffs. Often in such periods, thorough overgrazing would result in a climatic collapse and a repeat of the cycle e.g., PPNB, Gasolian, Uruk, and the Bronze Age cycles already mentioned. The fall of later Canaanite civilization occurred with the incorporation of the area into the Greco-Roman world as Ayudea province, and after Byzantine times, into the Muslim Arab and Proto-Muslim Umayyad Caliphate. Western Aramaic, one of the two lingua francas of Canaanite civilization, is still spoken in a number of small Syrian villages, whilst Phoenician Canaanite disappeared as a spoken language in about 100 AD. A separate Akkadian-infused Eastern Aramaic is still spoken by the existing Assyrians of Iraq, Iran, northeast Syria and southeast Turkey. Tel Kabri contains the remains of a Canaanite city from the Middle Bronze Age 2000 to 1550 BC. The city, the most important of the cities in the Western Galilee during that period, had a palace at its center. Tel Kabri is the only Canaanite city that can be excavated in its entirety because after the city was abandoned, no other city was built over its remains. It is notable because the predominant extra Canaanite cultural influence is Minoan. Minoan style frescoes decorate the palace. <laughs> Legacy Canaan is used as a synonym of the promised land, for instance, it is used in this sense in the hymn, Canaan's Happy Shore, with the lines, Oh, brothers, will you meet me, 3x, on Canaan's happy shore? A hymn set to the tune later used in the Battle Hymn of the Republic. In Jewish European history, Bohemia was sometimes called the land of Canaan, whence the name of the now extinct Nonich language. List of Canaan's rulers Names of Canaanite kings or other figures mentioned in historiography or known through archaeology In Jewish and Christian scriptures Hebrew Bible In biblical usage, the name was confined to the country west of the Jordan River. Canaanites were described as living by the sea and along by the side of the Jordan. Book of Numbers chapter 33 verse 51, Book of Joshua chapter 22 verse 9. Canaan was especially identified with Phoenicia, Book of Isaiah chapter 23 verse 11. The Philistines, while an integral part of the Canaanite milieu, do not seem to have been ethnic Canaanites, and were listed in the Table of Nations as descendants of Mizraim. The Arameans, Moabites, Ammonites, Midianites, and Edomites were also considered fellow descendants of Shem or Abraham, and distinct from generic Canaanites. Amorites, Heth, representing the Hittites, is a son of Canaan. The later Hittites spoke an Indo-European language called Nesili, but their predecessors the Hashans had spoken a little-known language Hadili, of uncertain affinities. The Horites, formerly of Mount Seir, were implied to be Canaanite Hivite, although unusually there is no direct confirmation of this in the narrative. The Hurrians, based in Upper Mesopotamia, spoke the Hurrian language. Their language was a language isolate. In the Bible, the renaming of the land of Canaan as the land of Israel marks the Israelite conquest of the Promised Land. Canaan and the Canaanites are mentioned some 160 times in the Hebrew Bible, mostly in the Pentateuch and the books of Joshua and Judges. An ancestor called Canaan first appears as one of Noah's grandsons. He appears during the narrative known as the Curse of Ham, in which Canaan is cursed with perpetual slavery because his father Ham had looked upon the drunk and naked Noah. The expression look upon at times has sexual overtones in the bible as in leviticus chapter 20 verse 11 the man who lies with his father's wife has uncovered his father's nakedness 
As a result, interpreters have proposed a variety of possibilities as to what kind of transgression has been committed by Cain, including the possibility that maternal incest is implied. God later promises the land of Canaan to Abraham, and eventually delivers it to descendants of Abraham, the Israelites. The biblical history has become increasingly problematic as the archaeological and textual evidence supports the idea that the early Israelites were in fact themselves Canaanites. The Hebrew Bible lists borders for the land of Canaan. The Book of Numbers, 34 2, includes the phrase, The land of Canaan is defined by its borders. The borders are then delineated in Numbers chapter 34, verses 3 12. The term, Canaanites, in Biblical Hebrew is applied especially to the inhabitants of the lower regions, along the sea coast and on the shores of the Jordan River, as opposed to the inhabitants of the mountainous regions. By the Second Temple period 530 BC to 70 AD, Canaanite, in the Hebrew language had come to be not an ethnic designation, so much as a general synonym for merchant, as it is interpreted in, for example, Book of Job chapter 40 verse 30, or Book of Proverbs chapter 31 verse 24. John N. Oswalt notes that, Canaan consists of the land west of the Jordan and is distinguished from the area east of the Jordan. Oswalt then goes on to say that in Scripture, Canaan takes on a theological character as the land which is God's gift, and the place of abundance. The Hebrew Bible describes the Israelite conquest of Canaan in the former prophets, Nevi'im Rishonim, Nebaim Raunim viz., the books of Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings. These books of the Old Testament canon give the narrative of the Israelites after the death of Moses and their entry into Canaan under the leadership of Joshua. In 586 BC, the Kingdom of Judah was annexed into the Neo-Babylonian Empire. The city of Jerusalem fell after a siege which lasted either 18 or 30 months. By 586 BC, much of Judah was devastated, and the former kingdom suffered a steep decline of both economy and population. The descendants of the Israelites thus lost control of the land. These narratives of the former prophets are also part of a larger work, called the Deuteronomistic History. The passage in the book of Genesis often called the Table of Nations presents the Canaanites as descendants of an eponymous ancestor called Canaan, the son of Ham and grandson of Noah Hebrew, Kenan Canaan, Genesis chapter 10 verses 15-19 states, Canaan is the father of Sidon, his firstborn, and of the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, Girgashites, Havites, Archites, Sinites, Arvidites, Zemurites, and Hamathites. Later the Canaanite clans scattered, and the borders of Canaan reached across the Mediterranean coast from Sidon toward Gerar as far as Gaza, and then inland around the Jordan Valley toward Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, as far as Lasha. The Sidon whom the table identifies as the firstborn son of Canaan has the same name as that of the coastal city of Sidon in Lebanon. This city dominated the Phoenician coast, and may have enjoyed hegemony over a number of ethnic groups, who are said to belong to the land of Canaan. Similarly, Canaanite populations are said to have inhabited the Mediterranean coastlands Joshua chapter 5 verse 1, including Lebanon corresponding to Phoenicia Isaiah chapter 23 verse 11 and the Gaza Strip corresponding to Philistia Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 5. The Jordan Valley Joshua chapter 11 verse 3, Numbers chapter 13 verse 29, Genesis chapter 13 verse 12, the Canaanites Hebrew, Nanyam modern, Naanam, Tiberian, Naanam are said to have been one of seven regional ethnic divisions or nations, driven out by the Israelites following the Exodus. Specifically, the other nations include the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Havites, and the Jebusites Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 1. According to the Book of Jubilees, the Israelite conquest of Canaan is attributed to Canaan's steadfast refusal to join his elder brothers in Ham's allotment beyond the Nile, and instead, squatting, on the eastern shores of the Mediterranean Sea, within the inheritance delineated for Shem. Canaan thus incurs a further curse from Noah for disobeying the agreed apportionment of land, one of the 613 commandments precisely n. 596 prescribes that no inhabitants of the cities of six Canaanite nations, the same as mentioned in 7-1, minus the Girgashites, were to be left alive. While the Hebrew Bible distinguishes the Canaanites ethnically from the ancient Israelites, modern scholars Jonathan Tubb and Mark S. Smith have theorized—based on their archaeological and linguistic interpretations— 
that the Kingdom of Israel and the Kingdom of Judah represented a subset of Canaanite culture. The usage of the names Canaanites and Phoenicians in later books of the Hebrew Bible, such as at the end of the Book of Zechariah, where it is thought to refer to a class of merchants or to non monotheistic worshippers in Israel or neighboring Sidon and Tyre, as well as in its single independent usage in the New Testament, where it alternates with the term Syrophoenician in two parallel passages. New Testament Canaan, Greek, Chanan, Chanan, is used only three times in the New Testament, twice in Acts of the Apostles when paraphrasing Old Testament stories, and once in the exorcism of the Syrophoenician woman's daughter. The latter story is told by both the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Mark. Matthew uses the term Chananiah, Greek, Chananiah where Mark calls the woman Syrophoenician, Greek. Strong's Concordance describes the term Chananiah as in Christ's time equivalent to Phoenician. Topic: <inaudible> Black Africans as descendants of Canaan. During the Atlantic slave trade, many Christians began teaching that Black Africans were descendants of Canaan and used the curse of Ham to justify enslaving Black Africans. This belief was especially strong in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, who canonized the Book of Abraham, which teaches that Canaan was a descendant of Cain, that his descendants settled Africa, and that they were cursed. Joseph Smith and Brigham Young both used the curse of Ham to justify slavery in Mormonism. This was also their rationale in denying Africans access to their priesthood until June 1978, at which point their prophet at the time, President Spencer W. Kimball, announced that as far as priesthood was concerned, the curse was lifted. Modern scholars do not believe that black Africans are related to the Canaanites based upon race as depicted throughout local and Egyptian arts and genetics and physical anthropology. Topic. See also Amarna letters localities and their rulers Canaanite religion History of the name Palestine Names of the Levant Topic. Notes Topic. Bibliography Bishop Moore, Megan, Kell, Brad E. Biblical History and Israel's Past, The Changing Study of the Bible and History. Eerdmans. ISBN 978-0-8028-6260-0. Day, John. 2002. Yahweh and the Gods and Goddesses of Canaan. Continuum. ISBN 978-0-8264-6830-7. Coogan, Michael D. Stories from Ancient Canaan. Westminster Press. ISBN 0-8061-3108-X. Finkelstein, Israel 1996. Towards a New Periodization and Nomenclature of the Archaeology of the Southern Levant. In Cooper, Gerald S., Schwartz, Glenn M. The Study of the Ancient Near East in the 21st Century. Eisenbrowns. ISBN 978-0-9314649-6-6. Golden, Jonathan M. 2009. Ancient Canaan and Israel, An Introduction. Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-537985-3. Killebrew, Anne E. 2005. Biblical Peoples and Ethnicity. SBL. ISBN 978-1-58983-097-4. Naaman, Nadav. 2005. Canaan in the Second Millennium BCE. Eisenbrowns. ISBN 978-1-57506-113-9. Lemche, Niels Peter The Canaanites and Their Land, The Tradition of the Canaanites. Continuum. ISBN 978-0-567-45111-8. Noel, K. L. Canaan and Israel in Antiquity, An Introduction. Continuum. ISBN 978-1-84127-318-1 Smith, Mark S. 2002. The Early History of God. Eerdmans. ISBN 9004119434. Tubbs, Jeff. 1998. Canaanites. University of Oklahoma Press. 
ISBN 0-8061-3108-X. Drews, Robert Canaanites and Philistines, Journal for the Study of the Old Testament, 81–39–61 External links Canaan and Ancient Israel, University of Pennsylvania Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology. Explores their identities land time, daily life, economy and religion in prehistorical times through the material remains that they have left behind. Catholic Encyclopedia. Antiquities of the Jews by Flavius Josephus. When Canaanites and Philistines ruled Ashkelon Biblical Archaeology Society. The Nakedness of Noah and the Cursing of Canaan Genesis 9 18-1032.